Hello everybody, I'm the Superior Sandbox, and it's been quite a while since I've made a video. And that's mainly because of school, and because of another project that I've been working on over the past few months. And I figured I'd show you guys that project in this video. Um, it's very, very different than all the other videos I've made. There's not too many videos of it on YouTube in general, of these kind of things on YouTube in general. So, um, it was very hard doing the research I needed to do to be able to build uh, what I built. And so I figured I'd make this video here. Uh, so if anyone else wants to build anything like that or anyone else comes across this video, hopefully they'll be able to learn something as there's really not too much resources out there for something like this. And with that, let's go to my garage. All right, so this is what I've been working on. And you guys probably have no idea what you're looking at and I would not blame you. This is basically what's called a monotube steam generator. And what it does is it makes steam. So basically um just uh what all the you know, what all the kids are doing these days. Uh you know, common common teenage stuff building a boiler basically. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, there's not too many videos of this on YouTube, so I wanted to go through and explain what I did. Uh, but before I do that, uh, and get into all that boring stuff that most of you guys probably aren't interested in, uh, I will show you it working. I have a few videos of it working, and I'll show you that, and I think it's pretty cool. about 20 psi to really kick on. There we go. Alright, anyway, so, um, basically, the reason I built this is because this guy over here, this is an old lawnmower engine, and I looked up stuff on YouTube um, about stuff that you can do with old lawnmower engines. The head of the engine is currently not on. That's okay. Um, yeah, so, I looked up like lawnmower conversion, like stuff people have done on lawnmower engines, and I stumbled across some videos of people modifying these so they can run as a steam engine or so they can run off of compressed air. And I, you know, of course, I thought, oh, compressed air. That's a lot safer and a lot more boring, so I decided to not do that, and I decided to try to convert this into something that runs off of steam. And that's mainly done. Uh, I still need to put the engine back together, but it's mainly done. Um, there's a few things I need to do with that. I'll make another video on this engine when it's all set and working. But basically, the thing is, if you want to run a steam engine, you need steam. And that turns out that that's the hard part. So I did lots and lots and lots of research. I don't know why I did so much research on it, but I did lots and lots and lots of research and I came up with this. So a lot of people, when they think about steam boilers, they think of, you know, trains or, you know, things, old things in the 1800s that blew up and killed people. Well, that's not what this is, 
And it's also not a moonshine distillery, because I found out after I built this that it looks a lot like one of those. Uh, but that is doesn't do that at all. But, um, in fact, I don't even know. Pretty darn sure it's not anything close to that. It just kind of looks like it because of the funnel on the top. But anyways, um, yeah, no, this is very safe. This is not anything uh, that really could explode at all. I mean, um, inside, let's see. So inside here, we got 100 feet of 3 8 inch copper tubing. And really, I imagine only 50 feet of it is ever filled with water at any given time. And the other half is filled with steam. You basically have two coils stacked on top of each other. One filled with water, one filled with steam. The water heats up, goes into the top where the steam is, and then the steam comes out here. That's basically what it does. But, um, you know... So there's not much water in it at any given time. So there's really not much in here. It makes it on demand. Think of an on demand water heater. Not like that one over there. That is a big vat of water that heats up. So think of it like a on demand water heater that heats up water as it's needed, except it heats up water a lot faster and a lot hotter. Uh, now the thing about these boilers is the only reason they're more complicated than say a big vat of water with a fire lit underneath it, which is pretty darn easy to make. Um, the thing about this is the water level. It'll run out of water very quickly if you're not constantly pumping water in. So that's why I have this valve down here. This is the water inlet. Water is pumped with an electric pump up here. It's the 12-volt electric pump that I got on eBay. Um, that will pump water through here and up this tubing through the first half of the coil until it hits this spark plug. There's two wires on that, positive and a negative, connected to each pole of the spark plug. And as you can see, down in here, there is a, I wish I had a laser pointer, that'd be pretty cool. There is a copper T fitting and some adapter fittings that kind of, like that's the lower coil, that's the higher coil. All this does is connect the two, so right where the two coils connect. And when you buy these coils too, they come in uh, 50 foot spirals. So basically, you're just connecting one 50-foot spiral to another 50-foot spiral. And as you can see, that connects right there. So basically, when the water is pumped up to here, it will connect in there. Water conducts electricity. So as you know, um, it will complete the circuit in here. And that completed circuit sends a signal to a little circuit board, which tells the pump to turn off. Then, of course, when the water drains back down, as it's turning into steam, the water goes back down. And then it's and then that signal is broken, and the pump kicks back on until the circuit completes again. And that basically just goes on and on and on. In fact, I showed that in one of the videos a few minutes ago. So, moving right along, let me explain even more in detail about this thing. Let me start with down here. What this is? This is a barbed connector. Um, it fits onto you can get them for any size. I got this from McMaster Car. I'll put a link in the description. It is a hardware website where you can buy literally anything to your heart's desire. Hardware related. Tools. Any, literally anything. Um, although I didn't get everything from there, but I did get this from there. This is just Teflon tape, you know, uh, plumber's tape, sealing, sealant stuff. Um, so, the pump basically pumps water in here, and I have a vinyl tube that connects here. This is very important. This is what's called a check valve or a one-way valve. You might be able to see there's an arrow there pointing up. Mean pointing up. There we go. Meaning that water can only enter this way. As we know, there will be pressure in here. And when there's pressure, it'll be pushing down on this. So you don't want water to come back out. You want water to go in and stay in. So that's what this does. It'll go in this way, but if it tries to push back, it will um, stop it. So that's what that is. This, just a brass T. This, this is a, not a steam gauge, this is just a water gauge. Since everything in here, it's just water. So you don't need a expensive steam pressure gauge. All you need is uh, water pressure. So uh, it's just a basic water pressure gauge. Got it from McMaster Car. Screws right in the top here, and you can see the pressure of the whole system since it's all connected. And uh, that's very useful. 
very, very important. Now down here we see uh, you have these little connector pieces in here, just adapters. Like this is uh, what is this? These are female fittings, and we have this male coupling here that allows me to screw them together like this. And here we have some copper fittings, copper solder fittings, is what they're called. And what they do is, all they do is adapt this um, pipe, this like very large pipe diameter, down to this little copper tubing. And for that, what I used is just basic, general purpose uh, plumbing flux with some lead free solder, or lead free plumbing solder has to be lead free because it has a higher melting point and that's important um, but for the most part these solder joints as you can tell that's soldered together and where is it that little T those adapters those are soldered together and that's because up to here from the bottom from the water inlet up to uh, this midsection right here in the boiler this mid split in the coil um, there's water there's water here. so since there's water here this coil will not get hot and it will not melt the solder. Um, however, that's a different story with the outlet. With the outlet here, the outlet assembly, this is just steam. Um, this is just hot steam. So there's no water in any, there shouldn't be any water in here. So, as you can see there, this is a compression fitting. Nothing is soldered here because this is the outlet part. So everything in this tube will be steam. There will be no water. And steam does not conduct heat away from anything. While we're at it, this. Um, this fitting right here, this does nothing. This is just a plug um, in that T. But what I will put here is a uh, pop valve, uh, pressure relief valve, safety valve. And uh, yeah, um, that's what I'm going to put once I figure out the kind of pressure that I want to, the maximum pressure I want to use in this boiler. I will buy one for that maximum pressure, whatever that number may be. And probably buy it from McMaster Car again. They make a really good website. And um, yeah, and I'll just pop it right in there. And so that way, whenever the pressure rises too much, this will pop open and just spray the excess steam inside here, which is should be pretty darn fine. And uh, the thing is, I you, you could buy um, steam safety valves from McMaster Car. But I think the cheapest ones are more, still more than $50 each. And they're, they're really expensive pieces. So um, I'm not buying one of those. <laughs> Since steam is really just a gas, it's basically hot compressed air. Um, you could use a, like for air tools, air tanks, compressed air tanks, stuff like that. You could use a little air safety release valve. And it should work basically the same way. Um, if anything breaks, it'll get stuck open which isn't bad because it'll just be open. It's not like it'll get stuck closed and it'll blow up. It's just, uh, you know, so really it's, it's. I've seen other people use it on YouTube, use a little thing, use a little uh, compressed air thing, and it works just fine. All right, so let me explain the burner here. So this burner right here, it is called a King Cooker High Pressure Propane Burner. Uh, it'll run off propane in any uh, any normal propane tank from a grill or anything like that. Um, this little adapter comes with it. This fits on any normal gas regulator that you might have for a propane tank. Again, you could buy them on Amazon, a high pressure gas regulator. That's what you need. And uh, yeah, that works pretty darn well. It just screws right together, real easy, nothing else about it. it screws directly onto the propane tank. Um, really, that's, that's what it's called high pressure gas regulator. It works very universal. Um, all right, so these right here, nothing. They're just patches. Uh, as you can tell, everything is riveted. These are rivets. These are what's called, or yeah, these are called pop rivets. Um, so if you know anything about a pop rivet gun, you can look them up on YouTube. Basically, you just need to get the right size rivet. You get a hundred of them, Home Depot, for like six bucks. So pretty darn cheap. This is all just random aluminum and some steel, old like scrap metal, steel stuff uh, that I just riveted all together. This, this plating here, this is not sheet metal. I mean, technically it is, but I didn't find it with the sheet metal at uh, Home Depot. I found it in the roofing section. It's some kind of uh, some kind of roofing material, but it's really cheap. It's really thin, since I don't need it to be real thick. Um, just really thin.
plating. And it uh, works really well. It's aluminum, but uh, it doesn't melt, doesn't get hot enough on the walls to actually melt it. So it's just fine. Um, anyways, let me talk about this output assembly here. As you can see, we got a T, two male adapters. And uh, these are actually quarter inch fittings, by the way, quarter inch pipe fittings. That's what you need to know for that. These might look a little bitter, that bigger. That's because these are 3 8 inch. But really, I didn't need to use 3 8 inch. I could have just used uh, quarter inch pipe fittings. By the way, this tube is 3 8 inch. And this, these pipe fittings are also 3 8 inch. But pipe diameter and tube diameter are two completely different kinds of measurements, which I found out the hard way. Um, so that's, that's basically why... Um, don't think they'll be the same size. Don't think these will be the same size as the two because they will not be. They will be much, much, much bigger. Um, and you'll need to get adapters and everything like I did right here. Um, I mean, you'll need an adapter anyways, but I have like two in here going into each other, which is kind of unnecessary. But it still works. Anyways, uh, so these are quarter-inch fittings. Really, that's all you need. These are definitely big enough for this kind of thing. You do not need 3 inch, 3 8 inch, but I just... You know, this is the first part of it I put together. Um, but either way, it doesn't matter really. These are just a bit more expensive, so that's why you really only need quarter inch fittings. But anyways, let me explain this. So you got two valves here. Uh, this valve with the spring, this is like a throttle. This is what will be connected to the engine. It will always be connected to the engine. And this one will always be connected to nothing. Um, so what does this do? This is what's called a dump valve. So when you first start up the boiler, uh, before before uh, turning your throttle and letting it into the engine, there's going to be some water up in here. There's going to be some water up in here. So what you want to do, you want to let steam pressure build up. You want to turn this. You want to let all the water sputter out until you get a steady flow of steam. Then you can turn it off. And then you know that when you pull this, it'll be just steam going into your engine. Because in here, you don't want water getting in there. You do not want water getting in there and messing everything up. Water doesn't compress, which is not good to have in an engine cylinder so um yeah that's basically all that is this is a spring actually i got this spring from this lamp as you can see there's a missing spring there and uh, yeah i took the spring literally from this lamp drilled a hole in here bolted it together this is from an old bike um from an old brake system on a bike let's see um yes here we go here's the handle it's pretty pretty nifty uh yeah So as you can see, if I take this and I move it, I just pin down there. If I take this and I move it, it moves it just like a throttle on a car or something else. And that should work pretty darn good. Uh, I mean, I haven't tested this yet, but I feel like that'll work really nicely. So, you know, and obviously, you know, it's closed. Default position is always closed. That's pretty nice, pretty nifty stuff. Um... Yeah, let me tell you something important about this spark plug again. Actually, this spark plug, I'll put up a picture. Um, you know, the little diode or the little uh, prong on the end of a spark plug. To prevent water from sticking in there, you need to open that out. You need to open that out. And you want that to be in the main flow as much as possible. This isn't threaded. This is just soldered on, by the way. I just uh, grinded down the threads and just fit it right inside that T and soldered it down. And obviously this is soldered. I use a torch to heat this up. I use generic electrical solder. Solder that on. That does well enough. And that's basically it. Let me, uh, let me explain this little piece right here. This little flat. This is just some sheet metal steel. It's not too thick. Really all it is is... Um, let me show you here. My phone went off. Basically, that little clamp... Uh, that's like a little metal clamp, whatever you want to call it, metal bracket, metal clamp. That's just clamping right onto this, holding that onto the tube so it doesn't fall down. And picture the hot gas coming up from below this. It hits this plate and disperses to the sides here. So that's how that's how these top coils get heated up somewhat evenly. Um, anyways, so... That's that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know, I mean, there's there's really um, not too many videos on this kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, that's why I got pretty interested in it, because no one else done this has done this. And I felt like it wouldn't be too hard, and uh, here we are. So, 
you know, as I as I update things, as I change things, uh, definitely I will post new videos showing the engine and the electrical system, the pump system, and hopefully the engine running whenever that happens. That'll be really cool. But uh, that's basically it for now. I honestly can't think about anything uh, except when I was testing this in my uh, in my front yard. Pretty sure all my neighbors think I'm crazy now, so you know that's always fun. But hey, this is this would be pretty cool. I mean, if I can actually put it, make, make an engine that puts out a decent amount of power, it'll be a pretty cool little system here. So uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, honestly, I think that's everything. So yeah, I mean, stay tuned for other videos if you're into this kind of stuff, or if you have any questions, just uh, just let me know. Really, I mean. Again, no one on YouTube is really making videos on these things. The people that do have videos don't respond to comments, don't do anything. It's just kind of annoying because it's like you have these people that, that built these cool things. You know, I'll put some videos up on screen or some pictures up on screen. And they don't, people are interested in them and they don't, they don't answer their comments. They just uploaded the video and just disappeared off the face of the earth almost. It's just, it's weird, you know. So uh, that's why I wanted to make this video, because uh, I figured I will answer comments. I definitely will, or I'll make new videos if you need the if you need clarification on something. So seriously, uh, it's a cool little project. I'll be working working on this over my next year of high school, next and last year of high school, and uh, I think it'll be a fun little project. And uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully. I'll get back to making more of your regularly scheduled content uh, sometime, sometime soon. <laughs>